Okay. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm Steve Blank. I'm the Principal Gifts Officer for the California Rangeland Trust, and I'll be your MC and moderator tonight. We've got a great turnout this evening. Hopefully some people are still trickling in, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, since the pandemic began, California Rangeland Trust has been looking for opportunities to connect virtually with our friends and supporters. And tonight's event represents one of the ideas we've developed to keep in touch. We are extremely grateful to Steve and Jane Sinton for hosting this event and introducing us to tonight's presenter, Lee Rubin. For those that do not know them, Steve and Jane are deeply committed to conservation of rangelands for the people and wildlife that depend on them. Steve was one of the founding board members of Rangeland Trust and their whole family believes in responsible land stewardship and getting involved. Uh, I think even their cousins help out. So we are honored to be able to conserve their family's 12,000 acre ranch near Santa Margarita in 2018. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. First, I hope you all have a uh, adult beverage and a snack in front of you. Uh, normally, we'd hold an event like this in somebody's living room um, with wine and appetizers, and we want this to be fun and casual. Um, we also want it to be interactive, and so you should feel free to ask questions during the presentation. You can click on the box at the bottom of your screen marked Q&A and type in your questions. I'll be able to see them, and I'll be able to relay them to Lee during the event. Um, Lee does want this to be a, a dialogue, not a monologue, so feel free to ask questions as, they, as, as we go along, and we'll also have a Q&A afterward. And then following Lee's presentation, uh, we're going to hear a short update from Rangeland Trust CEO Michael Delbar. He's going to give you a quick recap on the success we had in 2020 and the work we're doing and looking forward to in 2021 and beyond. And then Michael will also be taking questions if you, there's anything you want to dive deeper into. Finally, we've scheduled tonight to last about 90 minutes, so sit back, relax. I know you didn't come here to listen to me speak, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Steve and Jane to introduce our presenter. Steve, Jane, take it away. I guess I better unmute. Um, thanks, Steve. It's my honor to introduce to all of you Lee Rubin. Um, I've been a longtime fan of Lee's work. Um, especially as cows, which I understand we'll see a few of tonight. Um, I was fortunate enough to run into Lee uh, at a cattleman's convention and uh, he had a booth there and we had a long chat and it was fun. I ended up buying a couple of t-shirts that uh, I'm pleased to say embarrassed our children. So that was a success. Um, but not only a cartoonist, Lee is also an author as well. And this year um, marks his 37th year doing the Rubes cartoon. He's internationally syndicated. Um, he appears in hundreds of uh, newspapers and other kinds of media outlet. Um, he also, um, in 2018, he became the Rochester Institute of Technology's first cartoonist in residence. I didn't know there was such a thing, but Congratulations, Lee. Thank you. Um, that same year, 2018, he also uh, co-produced with a man named Ryan Johnson, a pilot episode for a new TV show called Drawing Inspiration. And that was through the Rochester Institute of Technology as well. Lee's written over 20 books. Uh, his work has been featured in films and uh, television, and maybe most importantly, advertising. Um, <laughs> He also has a busy schedule giving thought-provoking uh, and entertaining uh, presentations to art and uh, creativity conferences as well as professional organizations. And tonight we're very fortunate that he's going to be presenting to the Rangeland Trust. Uh, he's all around great guy. I've known him a while. I really enjoy my time with him. And so tonight we're gonna get a chance to see how this all gets done. So please join me in welcoming Lee Rubin. This is the part where I share my screen, right? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I just got to get it, everything all set up. Okay, there we go. How's that? Everybody Perfect. can see that? Okay. So 
thank you, uh, Steve and Steve, for introducing me and inviting me uh, to this tonight. It's it's uh, been a lot of fun preparing for this and and meeting with you both. Um, so, what is the the secret of creating a perfect cartoon? And, and I want you to notice that the asterisk down there. Certain conditions apply, and I'll I, those certain conditions. Uh, I I brought my legal team with me here, represented by a cartoon shark. Uh, with his, you know, the disclaimer is the opinions expressed by this cartoonist during the following presentation do not re do not reflect the opinions, views, or cartoons of any other cartoonist, living or dead, or even those in a state of suspended animation. <laughs> um, so, now that that legalese is out of the way, uh, perfection. You know what what is perfection? Uh, you, know, like, you know, like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. And I like to think, you know, that's why I like the deal, the idea of acceptable perfection. Uh, perfection may come with some flaws, but if it's perfect enough, then it's perfectly acceptable. Um, and here we have, uh, you know, another uh, match made in heaven, courtesy of loweredexpectations.com. Uh, but what, so what goes in to this weird kind of mix of, you know, ideas to come up with a cartoon every day, you know, day after day. And the perfect cartoon to me must contain imagination, brevity, levity, levity, art, and of course, surprise. All are essential ingredients in creating the perfect cartoon. But, but the question is how much of each? Uh, and that is, it's a recipe that is just perfect for just ad-libbing constantly. Um, so this is what I start with every day. Uh, and generally, uh, I have no idea, which is signified by the question mark here. I have no idea what I'm going to do every day. Uh, but I usually I start out sketching and most days I'll start off actually sketching a cow just to get the fingers moving. And uh, so here is a, a high tech version of that. You can see how hard it is. Anybody can do this at home. Just follow along. Yes, it's still the old-fashioned way with the uh, Mars Lumograph 3B pencil and eraser, and I erase more than I draw. I'm not ashamed to say that. So there it is. Ta-da! <laughs> so what, what does it take to fill this thing up? I, I, I have certain goals that I like to set every day, or at least uh, rules or uh, 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 something to aim for, and what I aim for are these. Most importantly here is create something whimsical that generally doesn't take the reader more than 15 seconds to get, but I'll go into a little bit more of that later. Um, I, I, I Honestly, I don't care if it takes you two weeks or three weeks or a month, as long as the payoff is there. Uh, something that provides readers with a degree of familiarity um, from their own lives, which invites them to actively contribute to the experience, because that's, to me, I'm communicating something. I want you to get it. I can't be so far out there that you're not going to get it, uh, but something that's evergreen, that's able to stand the test of time and be uh, relevant years from now. Um, I, be, I like to be able to publish something that I did 30, 35 years ago today and have it still resonate. Um, that doesn't get me kicked out of newspapers, which occasionally happens, not by my fault though, uh, that is family friendly, but with an edge. Uh, and here's an important one. That's why it's in bold. Uh, never underestimate the intelligence of the reader because we all know comics readers are the most intelligent people, aren't we? Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. Good. And and uh, and of course that will cause the reader to spray coffee all over their morning paper, mobile phone, or tablet. Um, <laughs> it used to be just a newspaper, but and so now these electronic devices get a lot more expensive. So you wear a guard over them. You know, have some plastic. But really, there's two the two main pillars that I really go for make it visually interesting and make it funny. But, <clears throat> oh, and there's one more. It's always funnier with a cow. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we have Silius Maximus, <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, <clears throat> the cow that is actually uh, featured, I was gonna say on this shirt. Uh, <laughs> so, but, and one more, one more boring type uh, slide here. The goal is to communicate concisely using both graphic and text with the intention that you, the reader, will have complete understanding of what the message is. And like I say, maybe it might take a while eventually. Uh, 
<clears throat> so number one, remember? Lee, Lee can I ask you a question? When, yes. you're, when yeah. you're doing the verbal part, do you have, does that take a lot of editing to kind of winnow it down to make it uh, short and sweet? Sometimes it takes longer than the drawing of the cartoon just to get that right. It's, it's like writing, if I may, poetry. Every word's got to count. You don't want to you don't want to underdo it. You don't want to overdo it. It's all in, what is it? Write, edit, polish. That rule, a, a very, a fine man taught me that once. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that's my answer. Whether I get it right, who knows? It's all acceptable perfection. Lee, we, two, two more questions. The first sure. one is, 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 do you, does your work typically begin with an image and then you write the caption or do you come up with the caption and then, and then draw the image to fit? It's, it's always a, a blessed day when I already have an idea. Okay. <laughs> and then I, then yeah. it's like, Oh, I know what I can do. It'll almost appear, you know, mentally and then I can put it down and capture it. Uh, but it really goes day to day. I have no idea. I really don't know what I'm going to do pretty much every day. Wow. Okay. You know? So it's like, I don't know. But I know what's got to happen. That's why all that that big list of rules that are there. Um, and there was another question. Yeah, Vivian. Vivian has chatted in and said, "What was it that inspired you to start with a cow?" Uh, they're just fun and easy to draw. <laughs> I know. I just like drawing them, and I've done so many of them. They're just, you know, and it's that simple cow head. That's real easy. That's just a few lines. Got it. Um, all right. Well, let's start with this imagination. We all remember playing with boxes when we were kids. It's still fun to play. You know, you build forts or tunnels or spaceships. And this is, you know, oh, geez, now what are we supposed to do? I only had enough imagination to get us here. <laughs> and, and honestly, I think, we're, again, we're all blessed with this incredible gift of infinite imagination. Uh, I really believe that. We all have this, these innate gifts as, as people as humans to, you know, creativity and imagination. And there should never be a lack of that. And if there is, you got to find a way around it. Um, so again, but I like to leave stuff up to your imagination. Again, that's again one of the important parts of the, the cartoon. I don't need to show everything. I don't want to ever be overdrawn and under funny. I want to be leaving something so you can imagine. And here comes the first cow cartoon of the day. This was no amateur job. They only took the most expensive cuts. Ooh. So this, <laughs> this was actually from, uh, you know, I used to really like Law and Order, the original uh, series, you know, not before all the spinoff, especially with Jerry Orbach. He was great. Uh, so there's this wise cracking New York City detectives. And again, I don't have to show anything really under that blanket, just some hints of what's going on because that makes it more interesting. People are, they use their imagination, what's going on under there. Um, again, now we have, you know, self-serve sunny side up eggs here. <laughs> the, so it, we, we can imagine what's gonna happen. I don't have to show anybody reaching in. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And if you, and people have brought this up to me in the past, uh, can you, you know, daily comics that appear in family newspapers really can't have nasty words in them. It just, it doesn't work. And also I think if, if someone does try to pull it off, it's lazy writing anyway. And I've always prided myself in like, I can, if you, I don't even think you can use words, maybe you can use the word crap, but even that, I think for family newspapers, it's kind of not really, it's kind of frowned upon. So I like to use a double bubble where I'll use the uh, cartoon bubble of one character to cover the what shouldn't be seen as the cartoon bubble uh, setting of the other character. Um, and that way I'm leaving it up to your filthy imagination. Uh, so this is it. Now, wow, that's sure not where I'd want to be when the, you know, that makes two of us. <laughs> I don't have to say it. You already know you're already familiar with the term. If you've lived at all, you're familiar with the term. Um, and again, I mentioned the family newspaper. This is my favorite double bubble. Well, if it isn't Mr. High and Mighty, always looking down on us and walking around like he's got a stick up. Hey, this is a family newspaper. <laughs> uh, I, have, I, have, I have dogs. I like to walk my dogs. And when I'm walking them, I have time to think of cartoons. 
Uh, and I'm also good about cleaning up after my dogs when I'm walking them. But ask yourself this question. If you were Robin Hood, why wouldn't you rob from the rich when they're walking their dogs? <laughs> Again, I'm leaving it up to your imagination. You can fill in the blanks here. And you can take what I, as you can see, what I do is I change characters around every day. There's no one set character. So I can go from the past to the future to the present. So I can reach back into the Old Testament if I need to. And this is a overcoming temptation. David opted against the obvious unsportsmanlike sheep shot. <laughs> Uh, again, leaving it to your imagination. Um, now, there is one more ingredient. Would you like to see that one more ingredient? You bet. Absolutely. Okay. Here's familiarity with the cultural and pop cultural literacy, which, again, I was leading toward before. But it's, to me, I draw on a lot of cultural and pop cultural uh, imagery or knowledge if you want to call it knowledge, or at least awareness of these of, of this pop culture. So if you don't know this stuff, you wouldn't necessarily get the cartoon. I mean, uh, you know, you, anybody here can raise their hand or say, any, have you ever left a coffee cup on top of your car and driven off or a soft drink or anything on top of your car? Done it. Yeah. Well, I'm, Multiple you, times. If you ever had it, I mean, I don't think anybody who's ever had a car has said who has driven for any length of time um you know has not experienced this so this is you know technology advances people stay the same <laughs> you've got this uh this trope if if you will but this is like thrown into the future we have uh the jetsons sort of car here um with an old-fashioned leather briefcase uh, also, uh, Mother Goose, uh, another a very famous, uh, you know, we're all aware of that. It's all part of our pop culture. We grew up with it. Our kids grew up with it. Our, you know, probably our parents grew up with it. This is, you know. Next, <laughs> Tales of Mother Goose auditions <laughs> today. <laughs> You'd have to know that the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> right. Um, and also, I, I, again, I, I'm drawing a lot on uh, some Mother Goose here with uh, you know, Humpty's repair service. <laughs> and there's a bit of combining this with the famous uh, refrigerator repairman ske sketch from uh, Dan Aykroyd did on Saturday Night Live way, way long time ago. But it's, you know, plumber's crack too. It's pretty much across the board on repair guys. <laughs> and then there's of course, uh, this little piggy had roast beef. So went the nursery rhyme. And for that little piggy at long last, it would be payback time. <laughs> so, so I got to write a little poem in there, or a little rhyme, uh, and again, it's leaving this up to your imagination, but you'd have to be familiar with the, you know, this little piggy going to market. Um, now, what happens when a bull goes into a china shop? Things get broken. That's right. Well, this is a real pretty little shop you have here, lady. Sure would be a shame if anything were to happen to it. <laughs> so we have these the, the shakedown you know we have the, before i had the all you have to do is change the scene if you have the cops that are in there uh the detectives in their trench coats they can still wear the same trench coats because the bad guys wear them too in the movies um now i want to i want to address technology because that we all have to be aware of what's happening culturally you know and pop culturally oh you know awareness wise and texting big thing uh, but we can combine that with a Western theme, you know, you know, now it's nothing personal, but my daughter asked me to tell you that it's over and she wants nothing more to do with you. Comprende, partner? It's breaking up via text. <laughs> You're taking the, the big John Wayne tough guy and this kind of punk kid and he'll be gone. Uh, but these are so differently. It's kind of fun to see the, yeah, the really range is. of it all. Well, it's, oh, and I'm just getting started, <laughs> but thank hey, you. Lee, not to, let me interrupt for a second. Samuel, Samuel uh, sent us a question. Sure. And he said, do you ever get on a creative streak and draw several cartoons at a time and bank them for, for low idea days? Or are you a draw one and my work is done for the day? Um, okay. I, I, I have an answer for that. I, actually, on an average day, it used to be two. But I mean, uh, an average day would be one, a good day would be two, 
a really good day would be three. I haven't had a three for day in years. I've had any number of two for days. But if wow. I, I figure if I can do one really solid gag a day, then I'm good. Because okay. it's not all I do. I have to do other stuff too. But that's, I have to get all that other stuff out of the way first. Uh, you know, I had to prepare for this, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, so. I know you did. <laughs> so uh, also, so we have, we have, uh, you know, elect uh, we have texting. And what about online dating? That's taken on a whole new, uh, you know, you know, a whole new scope to, to, for, to draw on for funny wise, or, you know, for, for at least pop culture wise. I mean, in almost every movie now, you'll show people texting new movies. You'll see it on the screen. Um, you, but dating. And, and what about dating if you were a cow? You know, this is you kids in your online hookups. Why back in my day, we met the old fashioned way at the meat market. <laughs> so if, if you, now, if you look closely, um, this, the app that the cow here is using is a uh, tender. <laughs> oh, so I like, it's just fun to, that wasn't originally, you know, when I thought about the gag and I thought, oh wait, that just works out really well. So let's just throw that one in there. Um, that that reminded me going back to the chicken sunny side up or whatever and you had the latex gloves it looked like you had a little ins added inspiration to the whole scene yeah well yeah exactly these little there's just fun little details to add in and, and if if it enhances the the gag um that makes it i know this is going to sound ridiculous more perfect perfecter <laughs> but if, but if it doesn't add to something leave it out you know, you don't need that extra stuff in there. Um, uh, pop culture around the world, the running of the bulls. Uh, I think we all know about that. Uh, what is it? What in in Spain? It's a uh, what Pamplona. Yep. Well, this is the uh, participants prepare for the running of the bulls. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're stretching. You got to make sure. I know someone could make a calves joke here at stretching the calves, but I'll I'll leave. <laughs> Now, now we have we have a very popular part of our cult, the cultural fashion landscape, if that's the way to uh, define it, would be uh, tattoos and piercings. Now, tattoos have been around forever, and so have piercings, pretty much. But they really are super popular nowadays. Um, this is you know. As the mental fog lifted, the dim memories slowly appeared. It had been a night of overindulgence, unrestrained debauchery, and on a dare, an unscheduled visit to the local tattoo parlor. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, now, and I'm not, I'm not done with the tattoos or piercing yet by any stretch, but piercing, you know, if you have kids, you're not crazy about it, maybe. Yes, I'm well aware that my nose is pierced, but those are different. <laughs> and it's gotten to be such a... Um, it's so popular, you wonder if, if there'll be a time where nobody, you know, will anybody be free of uh, body piercing or tattoos? And, and if so, what the, will that person be the, the odd person out? And this is a, see the amazing untattooed man, circus freaks of the future. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, if you're a good tattoo artist, you're busy. <laughs> um, Pop culture also relates to food. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can name the most popular uh, fast food restaurant in the world. McDonald's. Yes, of course. And uh, what what is there the meal that uh, they serve to children? The Happy Meal. That's right. Let's get happy. And this is you know, one wish. Hmm. Let let let's see. I just want to be happy. So, <laughs> so you gotta be careful what you wish for, right? Uh. <laughs> Uh, and you got to be wary of clowns. If you invite clowns to a party, especially if you're having a cast party, you know, that's great going genius of all the clowns you could have gotten for Junior's party. I had to pick that one. <laughs> so I, I'm not quite. <laughs> but then we, and we can, uh, one of the, one of the things I like to do is blend. I like to take two different things completely unrelated and smash them together. Uh, uh, take, for example, the moon landing. Uh, Buzz Aldrin was the number two astronaut. He was the second guy to walk on the moon. Neil Armstrong, I mean, still super famous, uh, but still he wasn't the first. So there might have been maybe some envy there. Oh, hold on. 
I was the second jump to the jump over the moon. Yeah, and this is the Buzz Aldrin of cows. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually skipped one here. I wanted to go back. My my last fast food uh, reference here. This is uh, she's adorable, and she only weighs a quarter pound. What did you name her? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then I'll go. I'm going to jump ahead to, uh, well, I'm going to jump back. Then I'm going to go really back. Uh, you, when I was growing up, and even still now, I was a big fan of the Twilight Zone. And there was a very, very famous episode, uh, To Serve Man, if you recall that one, uh, where the, it, it's not, it doesn't end well for the humans. Let's just put it that way. So if you're not familiar with that, you're not going to get the gag. But if you are familiar with it, you know, it's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. Yes. Best Twilight Zone episode ever. You you just, I, I one thing I try to do is adopt the viewpoint of the creature or whatever it is that's in the cartoon. Um, now, I'm assuming there are some ranchers here besides uh, Steve that We've are got watching. you on, on with us. <laughs> okay. So can anybody name who invented or got the first patent for barbed wire? Steve, no? I don't know. I, I, I don't have the first clue. Well, I want to let you know, I really try to do research here because people will call you out these days. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is Mr. Joseph Glidden, inventor of barbed wire, unexpectedly meets the improbable inventor of the time machine. <laughs> so, so, it's just sometimes just go weird. <laughs> Get really weird if you can. Um, Oh, now we have uh, on it. we have uh, you, free range beef is is uh, it, it's a marketing uh, tool and I suppose the uh, the cattle like that too. You can range. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm looking behind you, Steve. They look fairly free range there, enjoying the those lush green fields. But what about the spiritual side of this? You know, this is and it's not and it matters not whether our physical bodies are broiled, fried grilled or barbecued for it's our souls that were, uh, will ever uh, remain immortal. This is spiritually free range beef. Um, now, I'm good. So I'm doing beef, I'll do a dairy here. Uh, this was actually, uh, my, my wife practices yoga and uh, although she looks nothing like a Holstein, she did inspire this gag. This is, um, you know, some holy man, dude's got it all backwards. <laughs> Lee, you mentioned your wife. Does she think you're funny? I don't know if she's on there somewhere. Can you yell for the next room, hon? <laughs> yes, he's hilarious. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Just for that, I put her favorite cartoon in tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. Okay. Um, so did you... How, how did, about your kid? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes funnier than others, I'm sure. I'm, you know... Embarrassed? Do you embarrass them? Uh, I try not to anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> now there are, with Zoom, I'm sure people have had more bare ha bad hair days than not over the last year, uh, a little more than a year. Zoom has really taken off. So let's pay a tribute to all the people on Zoom that weren't quite prepared. And this is, uh, you know, sleep on your side again. <laughs> oh. I hope I'm doing okay with the cows here. Great, yeah, great with the cows. Okay. They're wonderful. Yeah. But you know what? I, I don't know if anybody here has ever had an impossible burger. Is that a bad thing to say here? <laughs> I hope not. I haven't had one. I, I had one uh, several years ago. I didn't know what it was. I had it and I actually really liked it. It, just, it was way better than anything I ever else had that, you know, I'm an omnivore. My wife's a vegetarian. Uh, proof that uh, mixed marriages work. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. So I I don't judge here. I'm just saying, but I wanted to say that that is the uh, the imitation meat industry is not. Uh, they cannot escape me. <laughs> you know, it's like it looks like hamburger. Check. Feels like hamburger. Check. Smells like hamburger. Check. It even tastes like hamburger. Check. Fantastic. This lab grown hamburger does everything but sound like moo. Mm -hmm. Check. <laughs> so, uh, 
Science, science is amazing, isn't it? Uh, and so are hot dog vendors. That's, that's a weird segue. But um, if you've ever been to New York, you one of the things you got to do is buy a hot dog from a vendor in the street, that and the big soft salty pretzels. It's, oh, it's, you know, they do that on, on Law and Order. Again, you'll see them discussing some case eating a hot dog with- Always. Yeah, it's, it's just a thing, you know? And inevitably, if you're eating a hot dog in real life, the condiments are gonna spill onto your shirt. So I wanted to pay tribute to that here, you know, full service hot dogs. You want mustard on that tie? <laughs> Yeah, that's good. And then we've got the seedier side of town. You know, it's, it's positively disgraceful. Just imagine making a living by selling yourself on the street <laughs> or parts of yourself in this case. So we have, uh, again, we have a lot of familiarity here. And anybody, it doesn't, you know, you in any walk of life should be able to get these cartoons. Um, uh, Raise your hand here if you're, or anybody can say it. Who's the most popular cartoon character in the world? I would, I wouldn't bet. Charlie Brown. I would, yeah, I'm sure he was. I'm thinking even older than that, though. Mickey Mouse. Yes. Okay, Mickey Mouse, so popular. All it is is really the original. It's three black discs, and it's so popular you don't even need to show his face. And it says, "Hey, pal, you got the time." <laughs> Oh, thanks. So I'm off of, you know, I don't know what Mickey's doing at the bar in three in the afternoon. Must be a rough day. Or it could be nine at night. This depends. Uh, but again, I, as I mentioned earlier, I like to be able to create evergreens that I can draw from years and years ago, sometimes uh, 30 years ago. And this this next one, I, I just posted maybe a couple months ago because I just felt like posting it. Sometimes I just don't want to do something new. I'll post an old one on Facebook or Instagram. What you see in the newspaper is pretty much new every day, but what you see on my uh, social media feeds are, are not necessarily. And this is, you know, keep lying. It's going to be a long winter. <laughs> I'm not quite done with this, this pop culture stuff. I hope you're okay with that. Keep yeah. it going. Great. Okay, so I was hugely influenced by uh, Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes, Chuck Jones uh, growing up. I loved watching those cartoons. And those cartoon characters are so ingrained. I mean, they're so part of international culture now. They're probably playing somewhere in the world and with YouTube all the time. And I mean, they're making more, they're still making movies with these characters. Um, how famous, you know, again, you don't need to show his face. This is a, at the Acme paint store, deep space black, fake tunnel black, black satin and jet black. <laughs> uh, Lee, speaking of your inspirations, uh, how, how does one become a cartoonist? That is a is something very, you wake up one day and say, I want to be a cartoonist? That's a, that, that's a whole nother presentation, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I wanted to be an artist since I was young, and this is as close as it's going to get. Okay, uh, I'll settle <laughs> for that. But I, I'll fill you in some other time, because that would just take me way too long. Okay. Uh, we'll do the history on another, another a year from now. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, we'll do that one in person. I would love it. So we have, um, we also have now a combining uh, high literature or, you know, literature with pop culture. Um, the One of the earliest, if not one of, if not the earliest, the most popular novel was Don Quixote. Well, let's mix them up with Warner Brothers and we come up with Wild E. Quixote. And, and again, I'm drawing a lot of inspiration here from, from things I grew up with. Uh, what and also you know when i was well it's been a few years when i went for that first appointment when i was 50 and i had to get that procedure that when you're 50 you're supposed to get you know what i'm talking about here well you know bugs bunny is probably 80 now so he must have had several of these this is he's going to efud md proctologist there was a time and a place for a what's up doc this was not one of them <laughs> <clears throat> And again, I, you, they're so popular, you don't need to show their faces. Uh, also with scientific literacy, I'm, it's really fascinating now what's going on with Mars and the Mars lander, or excuse me, the, uh, with Perseverance and the helicopter uh, that I think they were having some trouble with and I think they're fixing it now, or it's, maybe it's been fixed. Uh, but I like to stay current 
And this is a uh, good morning, Mars. It looks like another easy commute today with very, 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 very light traffic as far as the eye can see. And this is the morning drive time with the first helicopter on Mars. <laughs> if you've ever been stuck in Los Angeles traffic, you'll appreciate those updates. Uh, uh, and also, okay, so let's take the Mars, let's take Mars and bring, throw in Looney Tunes. This is a, I don't know, one minute the rover was transmitting perfectly clear images of the Martian surface, and the next minute I got Bupkis. <laughs> Marvin. And there's Marvin, he talks like this, and he has his blaster, and just, a, and if, I was researching Marvin to, to get it right when I was drawing him, and uh, Chuck Jones modeled him, if you notice, after a Roman soldier's gear, it's, it, with these big sort of converse looking tennis shoes, it's great. I mean, it's just it's such a brilliant uh, blending of culture there. Now, as I promised my wife, uh, the her favorite cartoon has no cows in it, but it's um, it could be a page or many pages or many days out of my life when I <clears throat> got myself into the doghouse. It's, oh, let me go. Uh, welcome back, sir. Are you planning on being our guest for one night only, or will this be your usual extended? <laughs> um, and I think a lot of people have been here in this space. Your dog will never be angry with you. They're always happy to see you. Um, and and I guess my, my well, my next to my final one on the pop culture, uh, staying up to date with pharmaceuticals. Actually, this is way out of date with pharmaceuticals, although it's still a popular pharmaceutical. How to deal with certain subjects in the family newspaper setting. Um, this is how, you know, the real and somewhat embarrassing cause of the mass extinction, reptile dysfunction. <laughs> Hey, Lee, Chris, uh, we've had a couple questions. A couple people asked Chris and and Lindy both wanted to know when you use, even if it's the back of Bugs Bunny or 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 Marvin the Martian, are you required to pay royalties? Are you required to ask permission for that? I can't afford that. <laughs> um, no, I, I I'm protected by the First Amendment, and I don't push it. You don't, you know, I wouldn't be drawing Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse every day because, you know, they have legal teams that are sure. much bigger than my legal teams, I'm sure. And they could make my life miserable if they wanted to. And I don't need that kind of grief. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, I'm okay. As long as just, you know, par your kind of parody or satire, that's, that's okay. Uh, daily, no, I wouldn't do it every day. Got it. Okay. Now, what day is today in the in generally up until last year and this year everybody's favorite day steve 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 you know this one it's tax day so i'm gonna here's my tribute to tax day and what it feels like you know another training day at ye old tax collector school <laughs> so so let's go i'm leaving it to your imagination here so uh brevity let's what is brevity Need I say more? Uh -huh. <laughs> but yes, it's economy of art and text simplify, simplify, simplify. And of course, some exceptions apply. Uh, the, if I can get away with a cartoon with no words in the caption, it makes it easier. But you really have to make sure that enough people are going to get the, 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 get the uh, gag. And this is. <laughs> I, won't, I, I don't need to spell them out, but. Oh, God. <laughs> and of course, a little more bathroom humor. I'm not getting that one. I missed that one. Oh, he's just going to the restroom. Outside. Outside. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, then, and of course, a few words here and there aren't bad. You know, this is a, the, now again, the brevity ties in with the art, which ties in with the context, which ties in the cultural literacy. All these things are going into this. Uh, so you'd have to have some familiarity with having a lawn and wanting to keep a lawn green. Uh, you know, it's positively disgraceful. Just look at the way he's fertilizing. Has he no respect for tradition? <laughs> and then there's a growing up, uh, 
you know, with you, I used to eat cereal every day. One of them, um, one of my favorites was Life cereal. Uh, another was uh, Captain Crunch. Uh, you know, these these garbage. I shouldn't say that in case any of these big cereal companies want to sponsor me. These wonderful cereals when you're a children. Uh, but there's fortified breakfast cereal, and then there's heavily fortified breakfast cereal. <laughs> <laughs> So again, I'm leaving a lot to your imagination here. You don't have to show the army, this, the, all these archers in the, in the bowl. And my, actually, my favorite part of this was drawing the crenulated bowl. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think cereal companies should offer these. Uh, uh, more, uh, more a little bit of pop culture with just enough brevity. This is a, does Pillsbury Doughboy meet his maker? Uh. Um, that's great and if you've got a if you have a dog that likes to play ball you know easiest three wishes ever oh my god <laughs> you know i mean how what a joy that is what do you want in life you want to eat you want to play ball you want to sleep uh, but if i'm feeling particularly lazy I, I i i'll try to use that to my best advantage and this is a uh, air and space exhibit frankly i expected a bit more <laughs> <laughs> I this is the the Smithsonian on a really bad day <laughs> uh, before they moved all the airplanes and, and spaceships in. Now, of course, I mentioned uh, we had uh, rules, uh, and they are sometimes like rulers are meant to be broken. This is you know, need I remind you again, young man? It's I before E except after C. Spell checkers of yesteryear. Uh, now we sometimes all had one of those. Pardon? We all had one of those. Well, I, I, I actually, I invited my third grade teacher here tonight, and she may be watching, and um, she was very kind to me. Oh, good. <laughs> so she was the opposite of this, this, uh, this teacher. Uh, again, sometimes you just need more words to make the, the, the gag right. And what, what's really fascinating about society and how we are living here today in society is we're texting more and we use emojis. And if we're using emojis, we're not using words. So, and back in the day, they used cave paintings. And this is, you know, this is just the beginning, son. Someday people will develop a highly sophisticated system of written communication in which they'll be able to express their deepest and most intimate thoughts and emotions. And this is what it's come down to. Um, but before the internet and before texting and before being online, you know, and it was just, just celebrated yesterday was uh, Gutenberg. For some reason, Google Doodles celebrated Gutenberg. So I figured I was going to, they can't outdo me at Google. So I <laughs> pulled one from my archives and posted it. You know, In addition to movable type, the famous German inventor was the first to devise a press specifically to making ground beef patties, which he planned to market as Gutenbergers. <laughs> so, there's a lot of words there, but I needed every one of them to make the gag. And it was fun drawing, uh, drawing the old school press, like kind of a, well, it's even pre Ben Franklin type press. Oh. So more, more. Sometimes you need more words, and this is, you know, too dumb for any other occupation. Goober supported himself by collecting pow, uh, cow patties to sell as fertilizer. In other words, the income poop scoop the income poop. Oh, God. I didn't say they're all in genius. I'm just saying they're they work. It just works. Um, now I want to know. I don't want to cut into um, uh, Michael's time. How am I doing here? So far, so good. Okay, you tell me. Give me the virtual hook if you need to pull me off here. All right, and I just want you to know your third grade teacher said she is watching and enjoying it tremendously. Hi, Joy. Thank Hi. you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, this this next one is. I'd like to try to work in as many puns as I can into a cartoon. It's a kind of just game to amuse myself uh, because I do like to amuse myself here <laughs> when I'm doing this. And so uh, this, this holds my record of, of um, nine puns in 27 words. So it's a 33% rate. If you were a batter in the major leagues, you'd be getting paid millions and millions of dollars for this, right? Um, so just I, like I you, eh? Yeah, well, just like me. And where's that contract? <laughs> Well, this is us. When Press, the tailor, a material witness in the suit, came apart at the seams, his altered testimony completely unraveled. The tale he had woven had been a complete fabrication. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go on to levity. Levity, because who doesn't like a good 
you know, fart joke, essentially. And this is tasteless, colorless and odorless too, but it makes it sound so funny. <laughs> helium. And I, I always thought it's fun to me that helium, the, uh, the periodic symbol is H-E. It just seems so perfect, doesn't it? Since <laughs> so, speaking of gas, you know, you know, yes, your honor, it's true my client's breath tested positive, but it would sub with someone else's breath. <laughs> so that that is a good attorney right there. Uh, but I'm not done with the bathroom humor yet. But again, it's just levity, you know, it's just, you know, really, Al, if you must make methane, please go into another room. <laughs> And let's, I'll go down into the dirt now. It's Deeper. always the men that get accused. Of course it is. Women don't do that. No, no. Dude, I hate to tell, I hate to be the one to tell you, but you've got really bad breath. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> I was, Lee, honest to God, I was just telling my son about this cartoon the other day. I, was, oh. I remember this one and I was just telling my son about it the other day. Well, it's, 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 um, Thank you. It's, uh, it's, I, I love showing this one because it's so That's perfect for us. <laughs> you're going to do anything to do with gas, it just works. Um, oh, at the all beef wiener mixer. <laughs> just, you know, ridiculous. Okay, I get it. It's silly. Um, and then we have. Howdy, fellas, I'm back. Say, I don't suppose either of you noticed a touch of irony in my tragic little mishap. Oh, the bullseye. <laughs> oh, did I mention Captain Crunch earlier? You when I was talking? cereal. Oh, I mentioned life and, well, I my, my homage to Captain Crunch, the cereal that will rip the roof of your mouth out, um, even with milk added, because it stays really crunchy. This is totally bogus. There's no naval officer in here, crunchy or otherwise. <laughs> so you need your truth in advertising. So I got pop culture and I could have sharks eating breakfast and oh, it's, but I'll end on a rancher uh, cartoon with this section. And there's not a lot more after this section. What's a, a, a candy with the word rancher in it? Jolly. Of course. This is, well, all right, Junior, I suppose one Jolly Rancher won't spoil your appetite. <laughs> no. So, and then of course there's surprise. And I, oh, and we've got, what do we want? Slapstick, when do we want it? <laughs> so again, that element of surprise. And a lot of times I'll use the, the, the split panel to make that surprise come, come through. Um, you know. Boo! <laughs> so you, there's a lot that's going on between the top and the bottom line. You just have to use your imagination. Uh, this is peekaboo. I see you. <laughs> this this demonstrates my love of clowns. Uh, you know, if, yeah. and my folk song growing up, little pop <laughs> culture. You know, if I had a hammer. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever had a neighbor that disturbed you, <laughs> you know, things you wish you can do, he waited entire, you can see about five minutes here between the alarm clock and the top and the oh, bottom. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> and then there's always the uh, more vexing than the villainous, uh, more vexing than villainous was the dastardly practical joker. Ah. So. And then, of course, one more surprise, you know. The entrepreneurial surprise selling fresh underwear. <laughs> now, do we have time to show a workaround? Sure. Sometimes, okay, so uh, workarounds or, or you're you're right on schedule, Lisa. Uh, okay, you're good. doing great. I, I'm not. I'm trying to not to pay too much attention to that, but I don't want to like intrude here. You're so doing got, great. So we've got improving on another idea. So we've got the light switch, the old trope of the light bulb, and this is. This big conundrum, me can't find sticks to rub together from fire, but me need to light from fire to find sticks. How about lending me a hand? Click. <laughs> now, okay, now I'm gonna go to, again, workarounds. Um, 
the way the system works here or the system I'm involved with is I draw the cartoons, I send them in to my editor who works for my syndicate, edits my cartoons, and what she will do is send them back to me with the suggested edits. Most of the time, they're pretty just simple grammatical errors, but occasionally, due to sensitivities that we live with these days, uh, and it's becoming more and more of a, a somewhat of a sensitive society, you have to pay attention to what's going around culturally. Um, such things as uh, guns, uh, smoking, Oh gosh, any, anything you know, that could be considered controversial in any way at all, um, I have to deal with that. Now, several years ago, I submitted this cartoon. He says, you know, work, work, work. That's all we ever do. Dude, you need to chill here. It's a fact, smoking calms bees. Uh, and if you know about raising bees, uh, you, they use smoke to calm the bees, the, you know, the beekeepers so they can collect, the, that smoke doesn't hurt the bees. It just calms them down so they can connect, like say, collect honey or switch the hives around. Now, my editor sent a note back to me saying, you might want to consider uh, offering a substitute or another cartoon entirely because some newspapers might think you're promoting smoking. And I, my initial reaction is, you've got to be kidding. These are bees. Uh, but I also didn't want to draw no cartoon because I'm lazy. So I decided I'm going to try something new. I'll put a warning label on it like a cigarette pack. And it appeared like this, you know, warning, smoking carries serious health risks, but bees don't really smoke. So relax, it's just a cartoon. <laughs> uh, oh. and, it, and it worked out so well. I was so pleased with that. Uh, and the editor was, we've got no complaints. Uh, but now if I really wanted to do, uh, well, I, I, I'm jumping ahead here. Guns, I mentioned that tricky subject these days. Um, I submitted this cartoon uh, was early or late last year. You know, who, you heard me right, pal. I said, put it all in the sack. So we've got a, a mobster pigeon with a nine millimeter holding up a uh, popcorn vendor uh, and then making off with the popcorn, not the money. That's the joke. That's the whole joke. I didn't think that the gun might offend anybody, but I got a note from my editor and she said, you might want to consider offering a substitute. And I thought, oh, I had to do, I don't want to redraw this. It was hard enough getting it just right to make it look right and getting a pigeon holding the, the gun right. And then I thought, well, what would be funnier? What, what would be even to me a little more bizarre than a, than a handgun? Well, have the pigeon holding a baseball bat. Uh, and if you've seen the uh, the movie The Untouchables, there's a particularly grisly scene in that movie. Great movie with Sean Connery and Kevin Costner. Uh, fantastic scenes. I mean, some really memorable ones. That is not one I would watch again. Uh, but it's funny when a pigeon's holding a baseball bat, and and uh, and gets off with the uh, with the loot, so to speak. Lee, Lee, would you say that this is what you're talking about now? Is how you're your approach to cartoons has changed since you started to today? Is the sensitivity issue or has it been some, some other great change from the beginning to now? Um, it's, it's becoming more and more um, work within certain parameters, especially the last say four or five years. I mean, there were, I mean, back in the day, you remember Andy Cap? I don't know if you remember that cartoon, the, the misogynistic, uh, it's still around, uh, the, the, he's a British guy, uh, misogynistic, alcoholic, unemployed. Uh, essentially, I mean, he beat up his wife. His wife beat him up too. They show these scenes with clouds and fists and feet falling, flying out, and that would kind of not really work anymore. Yeah, you know, I know, just culturally, it's not, it's, it, it's not uh, gonna work. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, maybe in some quarters it would, it generally not. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to touch on another, uh, and I, I can say I'm getting very close to the end here, here. So I, again, um, gender reveals. There's a subject I wanted to do something with. And if you recall, uh, just last year, there was a gender reveal party and someone lit a balloon or something and it took off and lit a wildfire in California, Southern oh, yes. California. And I thought, well, that, you know, that inspired me because uh, I try to get my inspiration from as many different sources as possible. And I was thinking gender reveal, how can I, 
how can I work that into a gag? And as one does, when one thinks of gender reveals, one would think of the Loch Ness Monster. I'm, I'm sure we often make that connection. First thing I thought of. <laughs> I, 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 say, I, I try to, I, I try to think that I'm on the cultural wavelength that we're all riding here. Uh, and, and then I'm thinking, so, okay, I'm gonna ask you this question, Steve. What would be the common name for the Loch Ness Monster? Well, isn't it Nessie? Yeah, now if, if you're gonna go along the, follow me here now. All right, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm with you so far. Okay, so if the Loch Ness Monster is Nessie, that sort of implies female if you're going to just go by names. Now, unless it's one of those animals that can genetically reproduce parthenogenesis, I think it is, is the term, uh, asexually, you don't need a partner. And some animals, can, some animals can do that. That would mean some Loch Ness monsters would have to be male. And if they were male, their name would be Nestor. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to do a gender reveal of the Loch Ness Monster. So that's a really long, a lot of connecting of dots to get to this point. And so this is the first version of that cartoon. This is a, I understand your frustration, Nestor, but trust me, Nessie refers to the name of the lake, not your gender. And I, what I really wanted to do was not show the front of the Loch Ness Monster because no one needs to see that. Okay. It's all up to your imagination. But I thought this joke, it, this was the first draft, but it could be better. And then, so that's right, sir. I believe I cited Nessie or more accurately, Nestor. <laughs> so to really show that what they're looking at, mom is on the cell phone covering her son's eyes. <laughs> because doesn't want to see that big thing there. But I thought it could be better. I believe you're right, laddie. It looks more like a more like a Nestor than a Nessie. <laughs> well, he's pointing now, so now it's clear the kid sees it. But I thought, you know, I really wanted to take this to a level where I could show the front of the Loch Ness monster and demonstrate that it was a Nestor. So I went from these three to this final version. You know, don't look so surprised, laddie. We can't all be Nessies. Some of us are Nesters. <laughs> And I could get away with full frontal without showing anything and not <laughs> lose anything in the joke. And I, so I have the door propped open. You can see he's clearly going to go into the, uh, the men's room. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, I draw on all sorts of, uh, anywhere I can get inspiration, I try to get it. And sometimes it comes from the weirdest of unexpected places. You know, this is for Mother Goose inspiration struck at the most unexpected moments. Full moon. So right over the moon and because it's all out there and it's 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 a big universe there's a lot of inspiration spectacular isn't it sun in fact astronomers say there may be billions more to like <laughs> us beyond the border of this cartoon so um, lee one of the questions we got beforehand from gary uh -huh. was do your ideas come anytime like when you're doing dishes or driving or or, or, or do you find that they mostly come when you sit down and you, you force your creativity? Sometimes it's like a real job. <laughs> I, I would say most of the time, it's like a real job. Okay. I've sat at this same desk in a variety of homes for 37 years at this desk here <laughs> that my parents bought for me probably 40 years ago. Wow. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and there's tons of ink stains all over this desk. Uh, and a lot on my hands, but I can wash those off. So uh, it really, it's a great day when they just pop into my head. It's just, that's like the, then that's, if, especially in the morning that I'm thinking, oh, I'm coasting today. This is going to be a wonderful day. And sometimes it could take 10 minutes. It could take five hours. Um, I prefer the 10 minute ones, but they don't come as often as they should. It's, it's just, just working it out. Do you just get up and go do something else then when it doesn't come to you? Uh, I will have coffee, I'll play with the dogs, I'll walk the dog, I'll answer email, I'll, you know, watch something on YouTube, I'll do what I think most people do is avoid work. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have to do this, I, but I have to do it. And um, is it due at the end of the day or for the next day? Or? It's, well, it's due at the end of my day. 
And the earlier my day ends, the better <laughs> sometimes, you know, if I, I don't really want to work after dinner, I, I, you know, up to dinner is fine if I need to get a couple little things done after dinner, but I just want to relax after dinner as much as possible. So yeah, you want your day to end. Do you yeah. ever, does it ever happen, Lee, that you're at the grocery store and see something at the grocery store and you think, oh my God, I got to. I got to find a piece of paper and get that down or at least remind myself of that. I want to draw that or. Okay. Hold on a second. Oh, I. Okay. So do you recall uh, the got milk campaign? Yep. Okay. So uh, in the nineties, I was having a particularly frustrating day. This is sometime in the mid 1990s. I did not have an idea. And it was again, very frustrating. When I got frustrated, I did. Uh, Jane, I think you asked this. Uh, I, I just went grocery shopping just to get out of the house. And I was walking up and down the aisles of the store and I came into the cookie aisle and there was a, they did a co-branding thing or something, that, a little sign that said, got milk, of course, milk and cookies. Uh, and it, this idea struck me and I went home and drew uh, this. I don't know if you can see this. Go closer to your camera. You tell me when I'm too close. There you go. I can't, now go up a little. It's you a have to burglar it. holding up a cow. Yeah, it's a, a it's a it's on a street corner, but we're really what you can't see here so good. And you know what? I can take it out. Is this one of your favorites? Well, for a long time it was. <laughs> it's a photo. And this is it was it's got milk, and it's just uh, you know a robber on the street saying got milk, and what it is. It went from my little drawing to a uh, Got Milk campaign actually used it. And this is on a billboard on the side of a building in San Francisco, oh, 40, wow. 40 by 60 feet high. Oh my God, wow. a little, uh, the second little guy up there at the top. Oh, you can see it now, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's online. If you wanna look at my website, there's actually a much better photo of that. But that's not a can question. That's really one of those times, but yeah, it just struck me and I couldn't wait to get home and draw that particular cartoon. Yeah. Uh, so it can happen, like I say, anytime, any place. Um, and how do you, how do you avoid repetition or or getting someone else's idea and it's too close or whatever? That's terrible when that happens. Uh, and it you know in cartoon land, you have there's a lot of syndicate cartoonists, and occasionally that happens. And sometimes it's weird; it'll happen close or on the same day. Like, how did that happen? But okay, you have all these people, cartoonists are th trying to think of something every day. <laughs> and so it's, it, the odds are it's gonna happen. I've, I've seen it where a theme will pop up maybe in three different cartoons on the same day. I think there's a conspiracy. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, Some weird wavelength out there that only goes to cartoonists. Or, the, or they tell each other. Like, I mean, occasionally there'll be some uh, email that goes out it, for some cause or something, uh, yeah. you know, it's like let's do a cartoon to celebrate, you know, uh, first responders or that sort of thing. And and then, but that's that'll come out a couple of months ahead of time to give cartoonists who are inherently behind schedule. Um, it just goes with the with the territory to, to give them enough time to get something together for that day, so it's all published on the same day. Um, hmm. Lee, Vivian wants to know, have you produced 365 cartoons a year for your entire career? Um, technically, um, sort of, yes. Okay. I get vacation weeks too. It's by contract and I think I need them. So uh, that, that's when I run the evergreens. Got it. <laughs> but I try to pull really old ones that you haven't seen in a long time. Because okay. I mean, I okay. Don't I deserve a vacation too? Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> and the old ones are just as good. Well, thank you. That's that's why they're evergreens, right? That's <laughs> they, right. Um, that that was all the cartoons I had. I this I put this up in oh, case anybody wants to, say, you know, email me or uh, you know, you know, that's my social media handles and website, whatever. There's my little plug for. No, that was wonderful. I, I, you know, one thing I do want to ask you, Lee, and I'm, it's probably on your website, but like, what what are you working on now that has you incredibly excited, or 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 is there is there new and different stuff? Is there a new book in the works? Is there what's 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 new and different? Well, there is a new book in the works. Um, 
yeah, which I kind of just found out today. Oh, I mean, I had, I had proposed one, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll make a little announcement later. You know, I don't want to say anything yet. There's no, I have no contract in hand. Okay. But I was, so I was, okay. But it's good. And I'm always trying to think of new kind of fun ways of spinning things. And the other thing is um, that, you know, Steve, uh, Steve mentioned in the beginning that the uh, TV show uh, called Drawing Inspiration, uh, which anybody can watch that original pilot. And there's a big cow in that one. I want to say a lot of it was filmed in the county up here in San Luis Obispo County. Uh, but it's uh, Drawing Inspiration is it's all about myself and my my co-creator of the show, Ryan Johnson. He's a fabulous uh, prop maker. I like to call him a special effects wizard. Uh, he makes a lot of, uh, you know, props from TV and movies and uh, theatrical productions. And they're just, it's just incredible. And he's an incredibly creative guy. Uh, and we have two kind of weird careers that are both creative. And our, our whole goal was to go out and find other creatives and get behind the scenes at the same time, you know, breaking the fourth wall, talking, you know, showing the cameraman, showing what goes into even making a show. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There's little bits of animation in it. You can see the pilot if you uh, Google drawing inspiration and my name, it'll show up or it's on oh, my neat. website. Okay. Very fun. Sure. Um, okay. And then the last question we had from somebody, unless any, I'll give you all one, one last chance to type in any questions before we, we let Lee go here. But one of the questions we had was, um, since you gave everybody your email, can, will you use an idea? Will you use one of my ideas for a cartoon? Uh, there's a tricky bit there. <laughs> I tend to not do that uh, for a very specific reason is I've had it happen where people submit ideas and then they will seem like a lot like other people's ideas and whether that's intentional or not. And I tend to think it's not intentional. They just thought of something uh, funny and I don't wanna put myself into that position Makes um, all the sense. So makes all the sense. Unless well, it's Lee, sponsored by some big company. Yeah, right. Fly, <laughs> you know, whatever. Corny flakes. I I have one more question. Uh, who who besides yourself is your favorite cartoonist? Oh, this is. Oh, it's that question. That question. <laughs> who, um, maybe not your favorite, but who do you really like? Give us I, one or two. I like whatever makes me laugh the most that day when I'm reading the funnies. I really go. I have no particular loyalty to uh, a, a cartoon. There are some of my favorites that I read. Um, I'm awfully fond of uh, another resident of the county here. Oh, should I not say that? Well, there's another resident of the county. It's a very well-known cartoonist. I read uh, both of the strips that he draws. Uh, oh, I'll say it. Jerry Scott does Zits and Baby Blues. Um, there's also Pearls Before Swine. There's, I mean, there's all sorts of really great cartoons out there. Um, we need more humor. So whatever is your favorite, that's the favorite. <laughs> that's your, I mean, like I say, I, I'm not married to any particular one every day. I do love Jerry Scott. I think he's very clever. Yeah, he's very, very good. So Lee, I did get one last question that I'll ask and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with you. But uh, a couple different people want to know what happens to your R-rated or not family-friendly cartoons? Is my brother typing this in? <laughs> um, they never see the light of day, nor do they get drawn. Okay. <laughs> you know? Because, you know, I just don't want stuff coming out someday. You know, you know it, it, I, don't, I don't need anything to come in back and bite me. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. But there's, but there's plenty up here. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you so very, very much. We really appreciate it. That was fantastic. Uh, that was I think great. everybody thank really you. enjoyed that. So, well, so a quick you. round of applause for Lee. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, so um, at this point, I want to turn it over to Michael Delbar, uh, Rangeland Trust CEO, and uh, give Michael a chance to just give us an update on what's going on with, with CRT. And, and uh, so Michael, take it away. Well, thanks, Steve. And, and thank you, Lee. You know, when I was a kid, the paper would come. The first thing I'd go grab is the funny pages and, and read those. Now, as an adult, you read the news first, then you got to read the funny pages to get over the bad news and the stuff <laughs> on, on, on that side of it. So thank you. And I've always enjoyed your, your cartoons. And it was a fun evening tonight. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you all for participating with us tonight and, and listening to Lee. Uh, we've got a lot of familiar faces or familiar names, I should say, on the, on the screen today and a lot of new friends. So we thought we'd give you a little brief update on some of our successes and activities this last year. To say 2020 was a challenge, obviously, is the understatement of the century. But for Rangeland Trust, actually, it was a pretty successful year. Uh, we have some very strong and faithful supporters that helped build us uh, a, a good solid base for which kept us going for 2020. Uh, we actually closed nine conservation easements in, in the year. That's over 9,000 acres that are now permanently protected. So from a conservation standpoint, uh, we knocked it out of the park. Uh, we had commissioned and released an ecosystem services study with UC Berkeley. Uh, people would ask us, Though the, the services, the ecosystem services that these ranches provide, the clean air, the clean water, the open space, the wildlife habitat, and food and fiber production are really valuable. But when we try to explain, well, how valuable is that? We just say it's really valuable. So we wanted to, to figure out a way that people can relate to that. So UC Berkeley professors monetize that, and they determine that the return on investment for the purchase of, of the development rights on projects under our portfolio was $3.50 for every dollar invested. That's a pretty darn good investment. I wish I can get $3.50 mm -hmm. for every dollar I invest. But the number that really blew us away was the annual value of those ecosystem services. And so for the folks in California, that value on just on 306,000 acres of our portfolio was $1.44 billion with a B. That number is incredible. That shows you and showed us the real value of the work we're doing. So when 2020 came and, and the pandemic showed up, you know, we really had to relearn how we keep folks engaged. But we did that well, and we engaged our audience through different virtual events. Uh, these, but those successes really belong to you, the donors in our community. Uh, everyone that, that either contributed or shared our messages on social media or attended a virtual event our work doesn't exist without, without you, our supporters. We developed, a, with, the, with the board's work, strong work, we developed a strategic plan that guides our efforts over the next few years. And that strategic plan had three elements, conserve the land, change the thinking, and sustain the organization. None of those are mutually exclusive. They're all linked together. Conservation relies on public and private funding. Sustaining the organization relies mostly exclusively on private funding. And changing the thinking and increasing awareness allows us to secure new and additional funding. One of our major goals in this strategic plan is to make Rangeland Trust more local. We wanna meet the needs of our communities and our landowner partners and advance conservation as well as the sustainability of the organization. Even though we're a statewide organization, the work we're doing is in your backyard. We have an active project queue of over 200,000 acres, but we need help to conserve those important working lands that we, why we still have the chance. We have successfully protected over 344,000 acres already. These additional acres represent ranching families that have made the commitment to forever protect their lands and we want to do our role fulfilling those, those dreams that they have. I mentioned the UC Berkeley study on the value of the natural benefits provided by these protected lands. And we have shared that message through webinars and partnerships, as well as individual meetings with dozens of lawmakers and policy leaders throughout California and across the West. The message has resonated immensely, as you can imagine. Rangeland Trust played a key role in policy issues both in Washington, D.C. and here in California. Our work has resulted in an invitation by the Secretaries of California Food and Agriculture and the Natural Resources Agency to be part of the development of the governor's executive order calling for 30% of the state's lands to be conserved by the year 2030. Now, Rangeland Trust can play a huge role in helping reach that goal if we are able to secure the funding necessary to complete those projects. These successes we talked about tonight, they belong to our donors and our community, even if you just share information on social media. Because of you, our supporters, these things were able to happen. We wanna share ways 
in which you can stay connected to all of this work. So while we're still constrained by the pandemic, watch for events like this one tonight, which brings together family, friends, get to see Lee and his work, and you get to see some of the work we do and hear about what we're doing. We want to provide folks with an update on our efforts, and we are developing a series of additional video ranch tours that we did last year that were very successful. So watch for those. And we've even started a Monitoring Mondays series on social media. We've done two of them. They, they show up on Mondays. So watch for those. Those are really exciting as well. But when the restrictions on the pandemic begin to lift, which we're hoping and we're starting to see now, and hopefully by a few more months, we'll be able to get back to life as normal. We expect to return to in-person events, uh, more ranch tours in real ranch tours and more face-to-face -face meetings. So in October, we have our, our big annual gala. So I will turn it back to Steve. He can talk a bit more about that or I can answer any questions anybody has. But I do wanna thank everybody again for taking time out of your evening this, tonight to, to hear Lee and, and enjoy his presentation and be part of, of, of our Rangeland Trust family. Steve? Great, thanks, Michael. Um, Folks, if, if anybody has any questions for Michael, you're welcome to, to put them in the chat or in the Q&A and, and I'll, I'll send them along to him. Um, but uh, thank you, Michael. Really appreciate that. Uh, you know, it sounds like uh, Rangeland Trust had a great 2020 and, and, and there are good things ahead in 2021. So uh, it's exciting. Um, and so I'll just give you guys a second here if there's any questions. If not, um, while we're, while we're waiting, I do want to, I was remiss and not thanking Steve and Jane Sinton for not, obviously everything the both of you do for the Rangeland Trust. Steve was our founding chairman, but for you know, bringing leave before us tonight, it was a really special evening and thank you both for, for putting that together. Yes, big thanks Pretty to had Steve. more fun than we did. Thank you guys thank very, you very hurt. much. Thank you. You made my face hurt, Lee. <laughs> I laughed so much. Sorry. <laughs> it was great. We haven't laughed that much in a year, right? Oh, good. Well, then, <laughs> then your, your immunity is boosted, but still get the vaccine. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, then, before we close, I just want to remind everybody, picking up on what Michael said, you know, California Rangeland Trust, um, our success depends on support from, from loyal friends like those of you who, are, who tuned in tonight. So if you do want to make a gift to, to Rangeland Trust, for every dollar invested, we return $3.50 in, 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 in value, 350% ROI. Like Michael said, I, I defy you to find that anywhere else. So if you do want to make a donation uh, and support our work, we'd, we'd appreciate it. And, that, and you can do that at www.rangelandtrust.org. Click on the donate button. Um, we will be uh, posting this uh, evening with Lee on our website. So if you want to share it with others, please do so. Um, and as Michael said, uh, if you haven't already heard, we have finally set uh, the date for our uh, annual Western Affair, Affair Gala. Uh, we unfortunately couldn't have it in 2020, but we are going to be back bigger and better than ever in 2021. That will take place October 2nd at uh, Rancho Mission Viejo down in Orange County. Um, and our hosts there have promised to make it best Western affair y'all have ever seen. So stay tuned for, for information on ticket and table sales. Um, but mark your calendars, October 2, Orange County. It's going to be a great night. So um, I want to thank everybody out there for attending. Huge thanks to Steve and Jane for hosting this and, and for the introduction to Lee. And Lee, thank you for an absolutely amazing evening. Um, that was really a lot of fun. I think everybody had a great time. A lot of, lot of good chuckles and laughs. And so thank you a million and one percent from, from the Rangeland Trust. And uh, with that, I will uh, sign off and thank you all and keep your eyes open. We, we, we hope to do more of these in the future. And, and we're working on some other really fun and exciting virtual events. And once we can, we'll, we'll do them in person again. So again, thank you, Steve and Jane. Thank you, Lee. And thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, all. I really appreciate it.